The Telecom Regulatory Authority responded to approximately 34,000 cyber attacks during the month of April. The Kaspersky Q1 2020 DDoS attacks report has revealed the overall number of attacks crew during the first three months of this year with a significant spike in attacks on municipal and educational sites. It's not really surprising though as DDoS actors are taking advantage of the current situation when people are locked down in their homes and are heavily reliant on digital resources. Today, I'll tell you more about the cyber threat that we are vulnerable to and what we can do to stay safe from it. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused almost all activities, including learning, working or even leisure, to shift online. The increased demand in online resources was noted by cyber attackers who conducted attacks on the most vital digital services or those that are growing in popularity. For instance, the US government's Department of Health and Human Services, a group of hospitals in Paris and servers for an online game were all targets of the DDoS attacks in February and March. The TRA's monthly report on cybersecurity developments in the UAE federal entities noted that the cyber attacks varied between malware, vulnerabilities and phishing attacks. Now, what can organizations do to protect themselves from the DDoS attacks that we just spoke about? First, do not panic. Unexpected traffic peaks may look like a DDoS attack, but these instances can be caused by legitimate users. They can visit resources which are not as popular before, at times they were not previously accessing them. Second, conduct a fault tolerance analysis of your infrastructure to identify weak nodes and increase their reliability. Attack vectors and traffic peaks are changing, so many resources may work unstably. Consider DDoS protection for your non-public services. Their importance to business continuity may increase, making them a target for malefactors. Now, what is it that you can do if you are a remote worker like me? In this environment, there are numerous potential vulnerabilities for threat actors to target, including personal computing devices, home Wi-Fi networks, and free or low-cost telephone and video conferencing services, such as Zoom. Information security policies specifically for remote work arrangements should be routinely communicated and validated by staff. VPN connections should be established with multi-factor authentication enabled to control and protect access to enterprise networks. I'm not talking complex policies which are going to overwhelm you, but just basic cyber hygiene guidance and virtual training sessions can quickly establish an effective baseline and this needs to be done. Employees should be warned about phishing emails with COVID-19 themed file names and attachments designed to entice them for you to click and open. Enterprise networks should ensure and reinforce blocking for downloads of unauthorized tools, applications and software on enterprise networks or even personal devices used for remote work purposes. Well, these are just some tips that have come from the experts and also other companies such as Kaspersky. We will continue bringing to you updates about COVID-19 and other news from in and around this region. Until then, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, follow and comment on this video and of course, stay home and stay safe.